A couple months back, OpenAI launched custom GPTs. These are custom assistants that can be taught your own like body of information, perform very specific jobs, no code required. That's right, even normies like you and I can make our own little AI helpers. And in the couple months since launch, over three million of these assistants have been created and they totally haven't all been AI girlfriends. Well, just this month, OpenAI launched a new GPT store, a marketplace to surface the most used, Ooh. okay, maybe most useful assistants on the web. And while it's still very early days for the store, I'm gonna run you through a few of my favorites right now. Get your wheels turned on how you can build this stuff into your firm. Up first, this guy, AI PDF. It's from the team behind myaidrive.com. This service will let you upload thousands of PDFs up to two gigabytes each. Those are huge. And then search and chat with the contents of all those PDFs. Now this could be legislative docs, could be your bike manual, could be transcripts from a from a certain 30 minute daily podcast by running accounting firms, T. Arguably the most useful thing that AI chat actually does right now is a better version of control F. <laughs> you know that guy where you're looking for something but you gotta get the text to match just right? This is better. It can go through huge volumes of information, pull out the one to the hundred most relevant excerpts without having to match up the wording just right. And with AI PDF, you can do it with a huge number of documents. Up next, Diagrams Show Me. It's an easy way to make a helpful little visual for your big dumb clients who need a picture. For example, My Biz LLC is an S Corp that owns two partnerships, 100% of partnership A LLC and 50% of partnership B LLC, which is 50% owned by their biz LLC. You gotta hit allow when it tries to talk to that external third party service, machine go burr. All right, so we've got my business owns the two partnerships and then their business owns half of partnership B. But what if, I don't like the layout here. It just doesn't work for me. Put the ownership percentages on the lines. Oh yeah, you know, cause that, who does that? I'll put the ownership percentage in the box. Come on, look at that. Not gonna win any design awards, but you're also an accountant. So we can copy this image, take it somewhere else. You can also hop in and edit like the original version, even open it in Miro. If you ever use that as a whiteboarding app, super helpful. Now last year we ran through my favorite 11 ChatGPT plugins, which are a little different. I'll link that video up here. We covered stuff like amortization schedule builders, CSV exporters, Word doc creators like generate a work paper and a Word doc. Many of those things there's also GPTs for. So rather than repeating all that, I'll point you to that video and then show you one more GPT before we build our own from scratch. The so last one I'm gonna show you here is one that's actually from OpenAI. So if you go down through the categories, you will see a by chat GPT group. And this is stuff from the team at OpenAI. Highly recommend data analyst. Now data analyst is what used to be code interpreter. If you ever used that back in the day, they now call it data analyst. And the wild thing here is you can upload any old file that you want to data analyst, and then it will write code and execute that code to complete your task. And this is really handy if you have like large volumes of information. So you got a big report that you need reformatted a certain way, or a set of financial statements. Meet Craig. Craig runs a landscaping company called Craig's Design and Landscaping Services. You might've heard of him before, and he's my client. Now his April financials are ready, and each month I send him a three minute video running through those financials. But I'm on vacay, and I need my team to record a video and send it over. <laughs> but they don't know how to do that. Check this out, if you're on my newsletter, a couple months ago I shared a prompt that uses data analyst to walk through a set of financial statements and actually build a three minute script, the type of thing you would deliver over video. It goes through the balance sheet bit by bit, the profit and loss. I got super explicit about the stuff that I wanted it to call out, and it follows those instructions really well. So check this out, I'm gonna paste the full prompt in here. You can grab this prompt in the video description. Prop, gonna hit send. Ready to help, upload your financials. Now I'm gonna upload a balance sheet and PL. Craig is gonna be pissed if he sees this. Drag and drop, send message, machine go burr. Searching my knowledge. Anytime you see this searching my knowledge, it's looking through a file. And as you'll see, when we build our own thing next, you can upload any old file that you want. It will use that as reference when it's actually returning stuff to you. Okay, we got a script going. Now in the prompt that I gave it, I told it, uh, start with an intro and then do the income statement analysis and then do the balance sheet analysis. I gave it very granular details about how I wanted it done, stuff like, Always call out the cash balances. Always call out current liabilities. On the PL, always look for the stuff that had the big month over month changes. 
you know, the sort of sage wisdom that you have when you've seen some things. Hmm. Know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. So if you look at this, hello, it's great to connect with you again. Today I wanna to walk you through blah, blah, blah. Income trends, total income reach. This notable component was your landscaping services contributing 61.92, blah, blah, blah. Payroll accounts, critical part of your operating expenses relate to labor, important to keep an eye on those. What this didn't do enough for me actually this time, and it did it for me more when I tested it earlier, was actually giving me like month A, month B, like those sort of comparisons like you would do over video. And that's kind of the beauty of this is you can tinker with the prompting to uh, get it to do more specific things, like really nail it down, or worst case, just hit the YOLO button and re-roll it. And if you think about this, honestly, it's pretty wild. And it's a great example of how giving a large language model really explicit instructions rather than expecting it to magically do what you want, you see that it's actually like quite good at following those instructions. You, you can even number them and like group them into sections and it will follow that stuff step by step. Honestly, not unlike fellow human beings where you get annoyed when they don't just read your mind. Now that is a really helpful AI assistant, the sort of thing that'd be valuable to share with your team. But you probably think of two things right now. One, did you just chuck Craig's financials into chat GPT? He's gonna be pissed. And two, how could I bottle that up and make it like a reusable version of that that I could share with my team? Okay, let's tackle number one first. Let's talk security. Now, actually this month, OpenAI just dropped a new version of chat GPT that is perfect for small accounting firms. It is called ChatGPT Team. It's for companies up to 150 people. Costs 30 bucks per month, which is $10 per month more than GPT Plus. The kind of personal version that gets you access to GPT-4. And in return, it will never train your prompts into the model. You actually get access to a better version of GPT-4 that can remember more. If you really wanna geek on all the differences, I'll link a write-up I did in the video description. But the short of it is you get some of the data security features of enterprise chat GPT at a fraction of the cost. So does this mean we can put client data into chat GPT now? They've solved the issue of data being trained into the model. Don't need to worry about that, specifically if you're on ChatGPT team. But the biggest complaint I still have here is you can't force multi-factor authentication for users. And the biggest security risk here, which frankly is actually the case for most of the apps we still use, biggest risk is somebody getting access via your login who shouldn't. Then they can pull up an old conversation with sensitive information in it. So I still have that gripe, as I do with many of the apps in our space. So while ChatGPT team is, is way better and I've got my whole team on it now, it still isn't a replacement for an AI use policy in your firm, which you should absolutely build out. And I'll link to a podcast where I ran you through how to build your own. In this case with Craig, in short, what I do is redact the client's name from the financials, ensure there's nothing identifiable there. And in my opinion on a team's license, I have no qualms chucking some redacted financial statements in for something like this. But that's something you also gotta decide for yourself. But how could we package that, that script builder into something reusable, something we can just share with our team, do that for financial statement scripts or any other workflow in our firm? Say, I don't know, a quality assurance bot, uh, an advisory prompt generator, I don't know. Well, the good news is if you're on the new ChatGPT team plan, you can build custom GPTs that can only exist inside your team. They aren't gonna show up on the GPT store and they can't be shared externally. I'll show you just how easy it is to build one. So I am logged into my team account. If you're not sure whether you are or not, here I have both a GPT Plus and a GPT team account. Plus account will show personal, whereas my organization's name is Mesa. So I'm logged into a team account on GPT. So I can hit the green guy to create. And we are now creating a brand new chat GPT. Now, two ways you can create GPTs. You go to the create tab and it will like chat with you and tell it like ask you various things about what you want it to be like. I'm just gonna go to the configure tab and put everything in explicitly how I want it because I'm hardcore like that. Now let's call this one video scripter. You generate three minute video delivery scripts for client financials. And I'm just gonna drop that big old prompt in here. In this case, I don't need to upload any custom knowledge. I just wanted to ask the user for financial statements. I don't want it to use web browsing. I don't want it to create images but I do want it to use Code Interpreter. And I know the naming is getting confusing here, but th that is like the data analyst functionality that we were just looking at in that other GPT. It's called Code Interpreter. Basically makes it so that it can process more different types of files, like Excel files, that sort of thing. Now notice I didn't put anything in conversation starters. You could maybe upload your financials. These are the little guys that'll show up above the chat box. So if somebody's using it and they're not sure how to start, that could be useful. Not a big deal here. 
And then actions, these are actually API calls to like third party services. So if you're a real nerd, you could get into that. We're not gonna cover it here. But honestly, that's it. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to save and publish to anyone at Mesa. That means, in this case, my organization's called Mesa. That means anybody within my team can see this, but nobody else. So I publish that, and now anybody on my team on this left-hand side, they will have a video scripter that they can hop in and use to do exactly what we just showed. Genuinely that easy. And if you got team members who are kind of unsure of where to start, building some of your own GPTs that live over on the left-hand side, that can be a helpful reminder for them of how it can help them. Now, taking the video scripter, for example, you can swipe this as a starting point, but I encourage you to build it out uh, more through the lens of how you review a set of financial statements. For example, you can even build a GPT just for digging into the cash section. Maybe give it the balance sheet, maybe give it the, the GNL detail. What are the things that you look for that you can get ChatGPT to dig into for you, either to help you draw out insights as maybe a second set of eyes for quality assurance? Think about how you can really explicitly define what you want it to do build that once and now you and your entire team can benefit from it. And when we're often frustrated that our team may not see and do things exactly the same way that you do, this is a way of codifying your expertise, packaging it up into something that anybody on your team can leverage. So the very best custom GPTs here are gonna be very specific to the ways that you work. But to give you some ideas, I will put in the video description some of the most popular prompts I've developed in the past. A prompt to extract a CSV of transactions from a bank statement. Oh my gosh, did I burn a whole lot of money on extraction tools to do that for me. Client gives me a bank statement, having to key that into a system, ugh. A prompt to research unknown transactions in the bank feed. You know, the ones that aren't very clear, you can't tell what they are. Copy and paste all those in it. will go out to the web and research every single one of those merchants for you in about 10 seconds, or a prompt to research using only info on a specific website like the IRS site or the QuickBooks support site because good luck finding any info on that thing. But last, I wanna show you one killer assistant that I honestly think virtually every firm would benefit from, an internal HR documentation assistant. You think about all the various places your internal HR information lives, your employee handbook, various other supporting docs that kind of augment that. Maybe something the boss said in a meeting last week that isn't outlined anywhere else, but is now the policy. What'd you do with that transcript? Oops, what if you could roll all these things up and members of your team could just ask the assistant and it would give them the answer from the authoritative docs themselves. Some larger firms have started using HR assistants like this and are reporting saving upwards of 80% of the time their HR team would spend tracking down answers for people. Let's go build one in like uh, 60 seconds. I have got two docs, a 28 page employee handbook I found on Google and a transcript from a staff meeting where the boss laid out a bunch of new policies. That's not true. It's actually a transcript from a 30 minute episode of my podcast. It is over 6,000 words long, but I'm gonna add this tidbit in the middle. Steve says if someone's food goes unclaimed for one week in the break room fridge, anyone can eat it. To the future. Okay, I'm making a new GPT here. It is called HR, buddy. Using the attached knowledge list in bullet form with exact quotations, the most relevant snippets from the knowledge to answer the question. Then attempt to answer the question using only those quotations. Only use the provided knowledge to answer the question if the info isn't there. Say the documentation doesn't clearly answer the question. Whoops. And tell the user to get in touch with Tracy. Okay, I've added a few conversation starters. I'm gonna upload our knowledge, which is that employee handbook from Google, and then the transcript from the meeting the other day, which is over 6,000 words from my podcast with one sentence about the break room. I'm gonna disable all these other capabilities because I don't want it going out and fetching external information. And gang, that's it. Let's save this for our organization. Okay, how can we test our fridge fact from that uh, transcript? Mark left a quesadilla in the break room fridge over the weekend and I ate it on Monday because I didn't want it to go bad. He's been out of shape now. It's now searching within the knowledge that we gave it. According to the knowledge provided, there is a policy in place regarding unclaimed food in the break room fridge. Steve says if someone's food goes unclaimed for a week, anyone can eat it. Based on this, it appears that your decision to eat the quesadilla left by Mark in the break room fridge was in line with this policy. Yes, is, is that true? Provided, okay, provided the quesadilla had been unclaimed for a week. This must have been what it felt like for those Apollo guys. <laughs> Joking aside, that's rad. That's so good. Now, what are all the interesting ways that you can use that? Also interesting, how can your clients use that, right? So highly encourage you, go check out that chat GPT team plan for your firm. What sick prompts are you building or GPTs 
man, drop them in the comments. Let's share some of the best of what you built. Still really early days for the GPT store, especially for domain stuff and accounting and tax. That doesn't mean we can't start swapping the best of what we're building. So go check out that new ChatGPT team plan. And here's a playlist of ChatGPT videos to get your team's juices flowing on the cool new stuff you can build. Man, that was great. Good bot. Harsh but fair on the fridge policy. A week is a lot, it really is.